One moment you're celebrating greatness, the next you're getting hit with the reality that you can't celebrate that greatness for at least another year, year and a half. It just happened so quick. 2024 was supposed to be the year of Spencer Strider. Not that he wasn't breaking out at least somewhat the last couple of years, considering he struck out the most hitters in baseball last year, but he hadn't fully put it together, which is the scary and fun part, at least for Braves fans and fans of Strider, which should be most people. It was fun to think about what we were about to see this year, to see him strike guys out, but also also lower the ERA and just dominate and do everything right. I mean, I think that was all expected back in the offseason. And after giving up just two runs in 22 and two thirds innings this spring, 35 strikeouts, the hype only of course naturally grew. No signs of fatigue, no signs of elbow soreness or any UCL damage, just signs of pumping gas and punching tickets. Yet here we are and Strider is throwing the slowest fastballs in his career, feels pain in his elbow and asked to get surgery to repair his UCL. So say goodbye to his hyped up 2024 season and at least the start of his comeback 2025 season and any comfort in him staying healthy or any comfort of anyone staying healthy, any pitcher staying healthy. Being a pitcher in baseball now is practically the same as walking on thin ice. It doesn't matter how good you are, how strong you are, how nasty you are, how hard you throw, how durable you are, how many innings you eat. None of that means a damn thing because you're just going to end up like the rest of them, eventually stepping on extra thin ice and falling through. And maybe you'll find your way back up and even keep going and be even stronger, but you're still walking on that thin ice and there's a damn good chance you'll fall through again and then there's a better chance that you're not going to come back up the next time you may be talented but you're not aware or working on how to prevent yourself from getting hurt like imagine being on a battlefield in war or something and all you're being praised for is your shot or attacking skills you have great aim you know how to use your weapon you punch well but nobody is teaching you how to not get shot or punched yourself nobody is teaching you how to defend yourself they're just teaching you how to punch but not take a punch or deflect a punch in a way that you don't get severely hurt as you're focusing on shooting your opposition and having good aim with your weapon, there's people behind you and at your side also aiming right at you that are obviously going to hit you. So you may be doing well, but you're also about to get hit and it won't be very difficult because you weren't preparing at all on how to not get hit, only how to hit. Elbow injuries just continue to soar and soar. They're tearing and snapping left and right. Another one bites the dust by the basically the theme for pitchers in 2024. Is it the pitch clock? Pitchers are too rushed now? Is it kids pitching and throwing so hard so early year round? Is it pitchers not being allowed to have a substance to grip the ball better? I'll tell you what it is, all of it, and more. I assume that you like sports. Just a wild guess, but if I'm right, which I think I am, I've got some exciting news to share with you today. Thanks to our partners at DraftKings, I've teamed up with DraftKings to give you the latest and greatest in fantasy sports excitement. Introducing DraftKings Pick 6, the ultimate way to play fantasy sports dress-free. So here's the deal. For all you new Pick 6 customers out there, DraftKings has a special offer just for you. Get ready to score big because you can get up to 200 Pick 6 credits if you use promo code I talk. That's right, no stress, just pure sports fun. And getting started is a breeze. Just download the DraftKings Pick 6 app and use my promo code ITALK. Then pick at least two players and see if they'll do better or worse than a stat. So then you just lock in your picks and compete against others for huge cash prizes. With DraftKings Pick 6, the crown really could be yours. So don't miss out on the action. Download the DraftKings Pick 6 app today and sign up with code ITALK. That's promo code ITALK. Remember, it's all happening exclusively on DraftKings Pick 6. So let's make some sports magic happen. Play smart, play bold, and of course, most importantly, responsibly. Only on the DraftKings Pick 6 app. I don't think the pitch clock has much at all to do with it, but even if it did, the impact it makes to contribute to these elbow injuries is so small that if it was the only thing contributing, there would be no elbow epidemic. It's a whole lot of things at once adding up to the problem. I mean, guys are pitching as little as ever now, getting pulled from games and getting as much rest as ever, yet are getting hurt more than ever. I was thinking about it the other day and the emphasis on crazy velocity and spinning the ball so much, contributing to these guys throwing every pitch with max effort. And I think that's the biggest factor. And I'm no baseball coach or doctor. I'm the farthest thing from either one. But I feel like pitchers should start throwing none of their pitches with max effort. Now, obviously you do that. The pitch won't be as fast or have as much spin so it'll get crushed and i get that but if there's some way where a pitcher can make pitching as close to playing catch as possible that's got to be the way way easier said than done obviously and again i know nothing really especially when the people who actually are coaches and doctors advanced coaches and doctors can't prevent the problem so what am i going to do but in theory i'm just thinking out loud if you were able to make pitching as close to just harmlessly playing catch while still being effective and throwing hard enough 
that's the key and would save so much stress being put in the elbow rather than treating every pitch you throw like it's the last you'll ever throw. Guys are getting hurt almost every other hour and none of it is an exaggeration, which is the craziest part. Guys literally are dropping left and right. Every day, someone new is having to either hit the injured list or get Tommy John or some type of UCL reconstruction surgery. The flexor tendon is something several pitchers are now having issues with, and that connects with the elbow. So any flexor tendon issue is an elbow issue. And then of course, the guys who actually have their UCL snapped or torn or whatever, it's just a complete mess. And it's also insane how quick this is happening too. Usually you would think there'd be a warning or some soreness in that elbow that would lead to eventual surgery. Jacob deGrom had an elbow issue for like two years before he finally got Tommy John with the Rangers. But now we're just getting the announcement immediately. When we thought this guy was healthier, we thought he was not as injury prone. But the fact of the matter is that every single pitcher is injury prone in the exact same way and there's really no way to prevent it, at least not that we know of or can think of at the moment. I feel like the term injury prone for hitters means more of something because when a hitter is hurt with his knee or his abdominal region, his back, his shoulder, neck, whatever it may be, it's actually more of a thing to be injury prone or not injury prone when you're a position player. Some guys are just more prone to getting hurt or they have a chronic issue within their body that others don't have, etc. But a pitcher having elbow problems is like a human being that drinks water. There's nothing special about it. And if anything, it's the most expected thing to come with the player. If they don't have elbow issues, that means they're they're probably not even pitching at all. They're not playing baseball. Whether they throw hard, whether they rack up innings, whether they're a starter who goes six innings or a starter that goes eight innings, whether they're a reliever, a long reliever, it's all the same at the end of the day in terms of health risk. And it all leads to the same exact thing. Why? Because it's simple. The human elbow is not meant to do what pitchers are doing. It never has, but it's only getting worse because as time has gone on and continues to move, we are testing the limits and more so pushing the limits of how much strain a human elbow can have on itself, can put on itself. It's just not a natural thing to do. And this is the simple result. I don't know if part of it is just because we're stupid. I mean, that's definitely part of it. Or that there are doctors and coaches who genuinely believe that you can constantly throw so hard with max effort over a long period of time and not have issues. Or they think it's not as likely as it really is. Like I mentioned, the culture around baseball and trying to get drafted or trying to get signed to a school is all about velocity if you're a pitcher. If you throw hard, there's a good chance you'll get signed to a school and get money or drafted or whatever, and you have a future. If you don't throw hard, nobody cares about you. So it's a combination of what schools and organizations in baseball value, along with kids and parents just looking at that and not realizing the pretty obvious repercussions that come with just shooting for good velocity. There's no emphasis on being sustainable through a long period of time. So just like that battlefield analogy I made earlier, I think we need to start emphasizing staying healthy just as much, if not more, as we emphasize being good because at the end of the day they matter to each other in a big way you can't be good or great without being healthy that's one of the biggest maybe the biggest factor of being a good pitcher that you're able to actually stay on the field to pitch like that's the bare minimum yet nobody seems to have that bare minimum now at least not for enough time so down goes yet another fun and exciting pitcher in spencer strider that so many of us were excited to see only improve this year but instead, he will be sitting out as he recovers from surgery, and we won't see him until at some point in 2025. The Braves were not prepared for this, obviously, which just shows how almost oblivious to this they are, as most of us are. This changes so much now, as they went into 2024 thinking they had Strider at the top of the rotation per usual, and didn't realize how likely it was that that would not be the case. Not that they're stupid, but it's pretty obvious that they really didn't have a clue that Strider could have ended up this way. But I wouldn't even put that on them. I think that just reinforces how quick and how random, but more importantly, how normal this has become, which just makes it even scarier and as much of an issue as it's ever been and it's all happening so rapidly that it feels most people haven't even fully realized how normal it is for any pitcher to go down at any time. Nobody's safe and it's clearly not something that's going to get fixed anytime soon like I've said in the past. But the most MLB can do is really just look into how to start emphasizing staying healthy just as much as being a good pitcher. Because when 166 players are opening the season on the injured list and 132 of them are pitchers, and only more have followed suit since the season started, with several of them being star pitchers, it's just not going to cut it. Whatever the root of the issue is, however deep it goes back to, or whatever the number of different things there are that are contributing to this, something needs to change. It needs to start happening fast, and I'm pretty sure we can all agree on that. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.